Scheiße. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then the hook is done, and then let's uh, go back to the... <laughs> Welcome to the number one crude mistakes. Today we will be observing KJ from Crude But Efficient, Glenn from Number One Projects, and myself, Hovart, from Behind the Mistakes. Three free-roaming animals from the brutal savannah that is YouTube. Welcome, guys. <laughs> So, how was your week? <laughs> All right, David, how was yours? <laughs> that was David Attenborough, right? Well, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a pale comparison, yeah. <laughs> oh, Real well slow done. game on the savannah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some kind of gopher, perhaps. or yeah. Definitely pray. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that we're observing KJ on an audio podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how that that works, but yeah, okay. Secret cameras. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking to my wife again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tim is sending us audio clips. Your wives are sending me video clips, so. Uh... <laughs> Stay hmm, tuned you... for a future video. <laughs> Hang on, I thought it was just KJ who was talking about. I didn't realise mine was in on it. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a, this is an all conspiring network. <laughs> well, what's the next next step? Smells? Can you record those? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> thought it was safe while we were here recording this one on my own. <laughs> Oh, I had a I had a beautiful incident to myself today. I was sitting in the office, and then of course I'm sharing it now with uh, three, four, five other people, depending on who's attending at any given day. And I was alone in the office, and it's just like sitting there writing on a document, and then I just let one rip, and uh, then it just dawned on me: Am I alone? or not and it's like should i say something or should i not say something and of course i knew if there's sitting someone on the other side there this is going to be the topic of the day but of course i can't get up and look around the corner because that that would be revealing so i was just sitting there just uh, okay keep keep typing but also listen for any indications that there are other people in the room no it's it's, fa it's fairly quiet <laughs> so it turned out I was alone, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a glitch in the matrix there. <laughs> I think you need to follow that up with, uh, oh, what was that on my computer? <laughs> yeah. It just popped up. Who's been sending me things? <laughs> Randomfarts.com. Oh, I haven't seen that page. <laughs> I have a quick link for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bodily functions. <laughs> Go on, KJ, tell us how your week was. Uh, well, my week's been a bit... Uh, I haven't really done anything. I, I feel, I, I realize that today, that I'm keeping from starting the my next project because I don't really have a clear path for it. So I've been more looking at the next project instead and, and seeing if I need to order some supplies and that sort of thing and just doing everything I can not to start start the next thing. <laughs> How's the editing coming on for the other videos? Uh, I am uh, more or less... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the rough edit of the next video. So now it's just a matter of, of cutting it down to like half the length or something like that. That's usually what okay. happens. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it all. It all. When I when I add music to it, I can't help but to add it to the beat. Yeah. And then and then usually, yeah, the clips fly off uh, if yeah. I don't find anything amusing. That's normally the first thing I do is add music and then then add it to the music. To be fair. Yeah, that's yeah. it's really satisfying when you get <laughs> when you get the music to work in some magical way. <laughs> but it's really annoying if it doesn't work. 
I think you need the music to add that magic because I think maker videos can be quite boring if they've not got a decent tune to them or any tune. Yeah, that really... You have to add a lot more than I'm adding to my videos <laughs> <laughs> to make them work without without uh, audio uh, extras. Yeah. You say you've got to order parts for your next project. What's going on there then? Yeah, uh, to to simplify things, I need some uh, I need some connectors and wires because I I, I feel like I, I need to uh, to lean into my uh, electrical background. Uh, a bit, yeah. but this is going to be some videos ahead, so uh, we'll see. Yeah, so I actually ordered ordered stuff from the other side of the world, which I try not to. So, so oh yeah, <laughs> this is going to arrive late April. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so it's good I started uh, started early. I don't <laughs> understand how people actually can take ordering stuff from China. It's normally pretty decent. When I order stuff from China, to be honest with you, it's normally here within a week to two weeks. Oh. Yeah, same lot, here. A lot I mean... bloody quicker than Norway or Sweden, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last couple of years it has become really good. Um, and of course, on, on some items they estimate the delivery in April, but you get tracking and then suddenly it's like, all right, it's arrived the country. So then, of course, you have to okay. wait for customs and so on. So I think... Nine out of ten, it arrives well ahead of schedule. So they're uh, they're really pessimistic in their uh, in their estimation. Yeah, they're I mean, very don't conservative. Know, tried. And of course, the <laughs> the smaller item, like the electronics parts and so on, it's it's so easy to just send by mail and it go by a, a plane. But if you if you buy something heavy, then of course to keep the shipping costs down they, they ship it uh, by seas and then of course the weeks rack on but uh, yeah just don't yeah, buy this, any big and heavy this should be an envelope so yeah hopefully mm-hmm. it's in a couple of weeks but who knows <laughs> i've got stuff to do do we get a sneak peek into that project Kajari? keeping that one close to your chest um uh, no i don't have to keep that does it uh, it uh, concerns uh, uh batteries uh, I, I, I thought I would do some kind of not deep dive, but some kind of dive into uh, into uh, machine batteries. I mean, the, the, I have I have accumulated a lot of Makita batteries, and <laughs> not all of them are functioning properly. So I'm going to try to to resurrect a dead one, and in oh, the meantime, okay. talk talk a bit about how they're constructed and the differences and, and why why they're different amp hours and that sort of thing. We'll see. Maybe it uh, turns out to be to be a dud. Who knows? But at least I need to do something with all the non-functioning batteries. So That sounds oh, like well, fun. While we're on the subject batteries, I bought a, a new beefier battery for my smallest drill so that it could stand <laughs> upright. and A big boy battery. A big boy battery. <laughs> and then I realized that, all right, maybe some of my other batteries are not as efficient as they was when I uh, initially got them. I mean, they run out pretty fast uh, of juice. I mean, using them on the drill, it's it's okay. But uh, I tried using the uh, angle grinder here the other day, and it's like uh, just cutting some mesh. And I ran through three batteries in like two minutes. So <laughs> mm, I think these are getting a bit low on steam so have you ordered some more no only one no, i'm just gonna talk about it yeah <laughs> i mean well, someone well, said you're not buying enough tools so i bought a battery that's a tool right <laughs> <laughs> not quite so sure but we'll Depends how you use it, it. <laughs> i mean it's, it's it's something that enables me to do something so i mean that's a tool isn't it that's a definition of a tool <laughs> Well, your 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 tools that used the batteries weren't really tools when you didn't have the batteries. So, in, yeah, in a way, in a way. Yeah. Well, that being said, you can use a drill without a battery, but you're going to get dizzy and it's going to take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it just goes back to the every tool's a hammer, doesn't it? So if it's not got a battery on, it's just a hammer, so it's still a tool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so therefore, a battery doesn't count as a tool. 
<laughs> well, you could use only the battery as a hammer, but I would not advise it. No, definitely not. <laughs> you should do a video on that, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think I'll link to, to some other ones who have done stuff with that in that area instead. Oh, no, I'd like to see your take on it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what the neighbors would think if I st- intentionally started <laughs> lipo battery fires in the garden. <laughs> Might not go down well. Yeah, if it goes seriously wrong, you'll never find out what the neighbors think, will you? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that as well. Yeah. Just uh, make sure you take a couple of deep, deep gulps of that uh, nice blue <laughs> smoke that pops up. <laughs> they say the high is quite good. <laughs> yeah, you, you must be become a superhero or something. Yeah. Nothing that. If Marvel Batch, movies have taught me anything. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say, what superhero would you want to be? What power oh, yeah. do you want? Well, I mean, to be able to take charge and and, uh, and uh, electrical charge that is, and and distribute it as I like. That would be nice, but more or less, I would probably fry stuff instead and. Not been able to use it, so no. I'll keep being me instead, I think. I think but I mean, isn't, aren't we basically a battery already? I think we're storing energy, and then yeah. you apply it, so yeah. I think as, well, a that's middle age, as a middle aged man, I think I'd be happy if my superpower was just not being quite so tired all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, the goals, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome to mid- middle-aged men being grumpy. Yeah. I would like my superpower to be, uh, what's it called? Patience. <laughs> He's patience man. <laughs> yeah, I've already got loads of patience, but then I spend most of the day on my own. So it's only myself I can get patient with, really. Yeah. <laughs> So what have you been up to, Graham? I, um, I've been working on the instrument, the little four string. So I've been having some fun with that. But I keep, um, <laughs> why are you smiling? And I mean, the, 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 the way you said four string was, yeah, it, it, it sounded very like close to Yeah, it was, it was very close <laughs> to that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's right. been a long day. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't carry on. I could see the look on your face, the giggle behind your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so KJ's recorded, stood up for a change, and he's he's got far too much energy. He's moving around too much. He's very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, going back, I um I've been working on the little four string, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> having some fun with that keep making little mistakes on it like um because i've shaped it before i shaped it i should have drilled certain bits to allow for dowels and things while it was all still nice and square oh yeah and i keep um i got some uh, new adhesive stroke filler the other day and i keep um if i see a little hole or a crack in the wood i keep trying this stuff out and because i'm doing deep fills with it it's taking 24 hours to dry, so that keeps really slowing things down. If I could just stop playing with that stuff, it would probably be only be done by now. <laughs> but yeah, so you're it's making it on. hard on yourself. Yeah, yeah, always. So what's the what's a different take on this one from the last one? It's got an extra string. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you're working your way up slowly to a harp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and... Um, a little bit more shape to it and um it's just something i'm making up as i'm going along to be fair which is fun yeah, i'm quite enjoying it nice nice yeah what about you h what have you been up to <sighs> yeah what have i been up to um <laughs> well last night i i got a good session in the workshop just doing soldering and electrical work i mean uh, Taking insulation off the wires and putting these uh, crimp ends on, that is therapeutical beyond anything. So uh, I got a lot of things done uh, for the Winchester, of course. Still, it's the hell quarter. 
so it's going <laughs> to haunt me until the day I die, probably. <laughs> um, and of course, I made the the front panels, and I've now test fitted the LCD screen. And I realized that I got all the filming done in one day, and then I thought, well, I just need the intro. Um, and then I have everything, and I still have a few hours left on, I think it was Saturday or something, and then, all right, I, ha I had a glass of uh, gin and tonic, and then I <laughs> went down to the workshop, I got the intro on the first take, it's like, oh, press record, nice. done it, and I'm like, <laughs> nope, I don't need more takes of this, just uh, and head it in and just edit it, uh, and I just made the thumbnail while it was uh, compiling the video, and I just uploaded it, so it's... It's my first fully one-day project, yeah. which was nice. Right. It was a decent video as well, that one. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. impressed. I yeah. should drink more, I guess. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Takes the pressure off. Yeah. I yeah. think I can, I can cope with a slow video that's about 15 minutes long. I think that was, that was all right, that one. I yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I had people also commenting, this was the perfect length. And yeah, well, it was <laughs> unintentional, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> How many times have you taken it apart and put it back together so far? Oh, crap. It's uh... Well, this one is not that bad. I, I think I've put it together maybe three times. And, um, of course, I over... Well, the tolerances and, of course, uh, I made the, the panels of a millimeter or two too, too large. It's... A, it's a pain in the ass if you make them too small. So, of course, I had to to sand the edges a few times to get them to fit. So, oh. and of course, using all these uh, dado slots and so on, you have to put it together in a certain, uh, well, what's it called? A certain uh, sequence. So, it's, it's a bit tedious taking it apart, uh, but now... Maybe that's also why I decided uh, these front panels look good unpainted because if, <laughs> if I were to paint them, I had to actually take it apart again. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah well, they, they, did. They, they did look good. Yeah, yeah I, I was thought they looked good. Properly, please. So uh, I'm going to leave them until they're so full of finger marks that I have to do something. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Then you can paint them. Yeah. <laughs> Just put a bit of natural finish on the front. Yeah. But that was... I mean, I, I bought a new computer, I think it was last year or the year before. Um, and of course, when you're making a mesh like that, of course, you, you make one hole and then you copy it along the one axis and then you copy that array of uh, holes in the other axis to make that whole pattern. But there is something in the calculation that Fusion 360 have to do. It really slows down the computer. And then when you have to make the tool path for the router on all those holes, of course, you can you can tell Fusion 360 that you want to mark all the holes with the same diameter, so it automatically just marks all the holes. I could not, for the life of me, get that function to work. So <laughs> when I made the parts and I was going to make the tool paths, um, I had to manually click on all the 3,872 holes. I spent... <laughs> I, see, I think I spent well over an hour on every part, and there's three three parts. I, I, I spent between three and four hours just making the tool paths, of course. And the first one went really quickly, but then it, it has to com like compute in between each and every one to like make the most efficient tool path and then it gets slower and slower so of course I was watching a show on my phone and it's just like you're marking three holes and you have to wait for 20 seconds until the computer oh. catches up and it's like and of course when you're getting close to the end you can't quit now and you can't change your mind because you're getting close to the end so you're just <laughs> sitting there so luckily when everything went uh, well it went beautifully to the end and then I went over to the CNC the day after and just loaded the CNC file in. And it actually went into something I didn't know existed. It was a large file mode. So it actually doesn't show a preview of the tool paths at all. So I just loaded the file. I didn't get any errors. And I just uh, 
pressed play and hoped it worked, and it did. And then again, the CNC spent over an hour per panel. So I spent one entire day also in the workshop drinking coffee, watching the CNC. Jesus. <laughs> Yay for computer so, helpers. Yeah. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> that's, um, I think that's the thing that gets me over. The, you know, when people say that CNCs, lasers and things like that are cheating, they are really not. You know, programming the computer to do the last drumstick was about three hours work to yeah. then sit with the thing and watch it so it doesn't burn down my workshop for five hours. <laughs> but I, I went a different path. I didn't go with coffee. I had a bottle of wine to keep me company. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's the thing as well. I have like a a one beer or one glass rule in my workshop as long as I'm, as I'm operating dangerous machinery. So uh, <laughs> after three glasses of whiskey, I get kind of sloppy. And then, of course, you, you <laughs> knock something over and then you hit the cable for the CNC and uh, <laughs> you break equipment or as you say, burn down your house. Yeah. <laughs> I I wouldn't operate the tools, but I think supervising them is all right, isn't it? Surely. Yeah, I mean, as long as you've got it running, of course, uh, sitting there yeah. with the big red emergency stop button in your lap, that should be manageable with a few drinks uh, on board. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's been a few times when I was younger, I could have done with an emergency stop button in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just to slap it hard enough, and it's kind of <laughs> stops that very stop efficiently. Them. Yeah, yeah, stops most things, I think. <laughs> Becomes redder the more you slap it as well. <laughs> <laughs> What is it about Tuesdays? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I well, guess we're all a bit tired. Yeah, You shouldn't be tired. You uh, you posted a picture. You're full of butter now, aren't you? <laughs> well, uh, I usually take some, some kind of performance enhancing uh, cookies or something like that before we record. Otherwise, I will be more or less half asleep <laughs> at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got to the bottom of the butter tub yet using uh, Havard's knife? No, no, no. no? Well, the, the, design, the design feature that he uh, explained in his video really does work. That 90 degree little corner thing on the knife really does get into all the corners. It's spot on. Yeah, I just cleaned out uh, my butter jar the, here the other day and it actually works as intended. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've gotten in touch uh, with, uh, like, I can sell that knife. To a few persons, I think. So uh, there might be more on the horizon. <laughs> might be gonna... a minor design change, but uh, yeah. Are you going to add them to the website? Yeah, I think so. If I'm going to make a few, I'm going to knock out the batch. I think I have mahogany left for at least 10 knives, I think. And uh, so yeah. I'm thinking I'll make a batch like that. I mean, it doesn't really take. What takes the most time is actually the glue up waiting for that so if i made yeah. it in one piece and then i can knock them out in an hour or two yeah. <laughs> going back to the i know we, we said we weren't going to talk about it again but going back <laughs> to your um, your video last week the knife video the the joy on your face when you got through when you cut that knife into two on the bandsaw and you got a nice straight clean cut was pure joy because we all know that that's really rare yeah <laughs> well i did actually use the the snod grass method of actually aligning the blade on my saw uh, last year so it, it cuts relatively straight but of course i'm an impatient man so i always push too much on it it doesn't give it the time to actually cut and then yeah of course it it, it pulls to one side I wish I, I mean, could have lied. Yeah, <laughs> mine is too shitty because I, I, I thought, hey, I'm gonna take a, take a good stab at this and actually align the blade and make it work properly. And then I watched some YouTube videos. Okay, you should tension this and do this and do that. And I looked up. My saw doesn't have that. <laughs> my saw doesn't have that. <laughs> so I mean, I basically have nothing that's actually adjustable. I can tension the blade. <laughs> that's more or less it. It feels yeah. like. And I bought, a, uh, but I actually bought like a, a wider resaw 
blade and that helped a lot of course i can't yeah. cut the curve to save my own life but i actually changed the blade and i like to think it was something wrong in the blade but i might have tensioned it too much but of course <laughs> it snapped while i was like uh, sawing something and Oh, that was a scary experience. I mean, <laughs> it's not really unsafe, but that sound while you're yeah. standing there focused with your <laughs> finger close to the blade and it suddenly just disappears in a bag. It's like, do I have my fingers? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought a, a set of three blades for mine and I used a small one. I used a thick one for e Sorry, and I, I generally switch between each project a couple of times. But I've never taken the time to read the instructions and actually learn how to set up set it up properly, <laughs> which is a real pain in the ass, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. And what's that middle blade for? I say I got the I used a small one and I used a thick one. I'm not quite sure why you need the medium sized one. Isn't that for uh, when you don't can't be bothered to change the blade to have something that doesn't really work for anything? <laughs> it may be just for gentle curves. <laughs> yeah, I think oh, that's, that's what I've that's had. That's the one you use for moment. aluminium. <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, that's a really good point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> to put one aside for softer metals would be a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I got the, uh, 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 the smallest blade I could find and uh, a metal blade as well. So I'm pondering if I sh- which one I should put on the bandsaw and how it's that they're all metal blades blade. kj <laughs> <laughs> sorry yes, oh, yes. I, I do not have Where a blade that, made out of wood roll, uh... or leather <laughs> or <laughs> yes come on people don't tune in for quality on here it's fine <laughs> <laughs> well not anymore <laughs> They came, they listened, they went. <laughs> Remember the three northern makers did their um, 100th episode and um, asked for people to send in voice messages and why they started listening. People say, oh, I came for Pierre and stayed for Steve and things like this. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, we came because we were curious and we fucked off because it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh. KJ, you were regaling us with tales of your bandsaw. No, no, I'm just, uh, I am I really don't like it, but it's sometimes it's nice to have it. But it really takes up a lot of space, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I'm kind of sick of it, but still, I don't know if I have anything better to put in that space. So I guess it, it can live there <laughs> for now, at least. The, the first, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm gonna do some reorganizing in the somewhat near future and disassemble my welding table because that is not functioning as it should be, and replacing that with something better instead. Uh, so we'll see how much space that will give me, right, for storage and that sort of thing. There was a, it popped up today actually on um, an eBay ad on Instagram was a folding welding table which looked really good. Mm. So that was a really good idea for the smaller projects. Yeah, it could be. Maybe a future video for you, KJ? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to do some sort of something that I put on the uh, the Super Duos uh, three-legged thing because, oh, yeah. because outside is so it's sloped, so nothing on four legs you stand, stand that <laughs> evenly. So I need uh, the three legs. So something modular, just a a sheet to put on it, I think. We'll see. Nice. I have some ideas when when I get time, which is it feels like never at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I see you've been uh, spending time on your roof. What's all that about? Yeah, yeah, there was uh last <laughs> last year, yeah, at the in the autumn when we had the chimney sweep come along, he said that well, you know that that thing, the uh, your uh, the, the ladder on your roof or the steps on your roof. That's not really okay. And something that's not not okay is the cloth hanger hooks that's attached to it <laughs> to, to hold the ladder. 
<laughs> that's not up to code. You need some. You need something proper that's actually attached to the roof, not to, just not just to the tiles, because the people living here before us actually thought that those hangers you put on walls to hang your coat on, uh, just two of those uh, bolted to one of the steps, that's good enough to hold the ladder. So, so then I got uh, so got some some proper proper hooks for that. And then the winter came and snow and all of that. So I never get, got out to actually <laughs> actually install them. So now when <laughs> when you actually get some kind of spring feeling in there, I I actually got up there and 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 tried to do a decent job of installing them. Oh, it's it's at least yeah. it's better than it was before. It uh, made me giggle on your Instagram post because you said I don't like heights, and I just commented, "You are heights." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's heights compared to her. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that being said, I had the uh, the sensation of springtime this week as well, and it got shattered uh, by the realization that our cat has been shitting all over the <laughs> the yard. And now the evidence starts popping up because, of course, there's been a lot of snow this winter and she doesn't like snow in her fur. So in all the pathways that I have actually dug around the house to get access to uh, basically (laughs) everything in the yard, (laughs) she's been shitting there because that's the only place she can dig uh, and uh, crunch down. So I'm just having to look at that, which annoys me. But... uh, yeah, I did the same realization with regards to our roof, but I, I just got the ladder with the wider stance. <laughs> 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 because the neighbor had an accident a few years ago. They have this uh, gutter without the, the outside hooks, so there is nothing to stop the ladder from going sideways. And, of course, he went up the ladder and did as we all do. He's, he's just going to stretch to reach that last <laughs> bit. And then he fell over. And knocked his head and so on. And I was sitting, uh, knowing nothing, at home office. And then I heard a helicopter very close by. And like, hmm, that was very close. Well, all right, probably something. <laughs> I was just looking for someone. And then 10 minutes later, I, I heard the helicopter again. Yeah, that was really close. And then that turns out that's the ambulance helicopter that was there to pick him up. And he was like touch and go there for a minute. And I was just probably sitting inside on my okay. laptop in a team's meeting, <laughs> drinking coffee, not knowing anything. And of course, helicopter landing outside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have, um, there is something with our house. It's, there is a training path uh, for the police helicopter. And then of course, uh, on the other side of the woods behind us, there is a, a mental institution. So sometimes people there go on unplanned hikes in the forest. So there is <laughs> quite a few helicopters uh, hanging over the woods behind us here. So we're kind of used to it. So, uh, yeah, a helicopter f- flying low by, it's uh, not a, like <laughs> it's not worth <laughs> getting up for. So. <laughs> I feel like we need some sort of proof, some sort of certificate from you now, Havard, that you are who you say you are. <laughs> well, there must be a little bit of evidence in the back to prove to the contrary. No, there's, there's no evidence. I mean, the, the Tuesdays are my days off. I'm on leave, but uh, I have to be back again by 10. <laughs> so that's what we're recording now. <laughs> because we have a session early in the morning, so I need to get my uh, six hours of uh, padded sleep. <laughs> that would kind of make sense actually <laughs> a little bit too much oh. then again a padded room alone that nobody bothering you that sounds yeah. beautiful <laughs> <laughs> free meds to keep you calm yeah that's uh, actually uh... <laughs> speaking of that topic we actually have uh, on the other side of the valley from where I'm living, we have a old mental institution, um, which I think per capita was the place where they did the most lobotomies ever. <laughs> and of course, That's this is cool. a, this is a small town, so a lot of people who worked there are still alive. And a lot of the people who work there, it's a big mental asylum. It's like um, the hotel in The Shining. So 
of course, people <laughs> who worked there, they, they also brought their kids because they were playing outside um, uh, in the garden and whatnot. And of course, they remember this and they're still living here. Um, not as much uh, the patients. Uh, those who survived have probably moved uh, due to the trauma. <laughs> but uh, it's like a real haunted site. But of course, they are now... Um, they have tore down a few of the buildings, but like the main building is protected. And of course, they're now refitting it to become a, a complex of condos. So now sense. people can actually move in there. But when you read the history of what has actually been going on yeah. in that building, is that the place where you want to have an apartment <laughs> and live with your family? I mean, uh, it's like taken out of the stereotypical, uh, yeah. Frankenstein novel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's like the, the the next thing after a Native American burial ground or something like that. You know yeah. that shit's gonna go, go sideways <laughs> yeah. in that movie. So when they but when they do stuff like that in this country, they'll normally name the building the old brewery or something like that, or the old post office. Or <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to call that? The old nut house. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the people just call it the, the, the asylum, and everybody knows what building it is, so that's probably going to be the name. At least, maybe not on paper, but that's what people are going to call it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Can you uh, visit the site now still? Yeah, it's oh, uh, yeah. It, it's now a construction site, so it's basically blocked off, but they're, they are on the home stretch. And, of course, it was fun for the kids to go in and explore, and there were leftover bed and chairs in some of the rooms and so on. But uh, the municipality closed it off. And then, of course, they if we can't tear it down, we'll build it uh, into something we can use. Fantastic. At least they're repurposing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least something is good well, going to come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Like a an episode of Poltergeist, but on mass, lots of people. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's weird. They don't do that anymore. They are building a new hospital here, uh, and it's uh, they are actually using brick and mortar on some parts, which is rare these days. But it's still just a square box with no character. But I mean. I think there's somewhere on the west coast of Norway, up in the hillside, there's also a fantastic old building, which, yeah, it was a mental hospital that as well, but it was really nice built, really like uh, the brick and mortar game on that. It was superior and it stands beautifully today. And I think it's for sale for something ridiculously cheap. Of course, it's uh, the access up on the hillside is... Uh, Maybe not the easiest, but uh, yeah, could you make a, a maker mansion <laughs> or something? And then you can host uh, maker events, uh, Halloween <laughs> events. Yeah, maybe one should uh, <laughs> repurpose that. That sound like a, a Bard's version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show to me. That as well. Yeah. Come on up to the lab. Let's see <laughs> what's on Havard's slab. <laughs> it's Glenn. <laughs> Keep telling him to get off when he likes it. <laughs> I, I, I think I went, I went the one time to Riga uh, and... Uh, I just read about the restaurant there, and I, I checked this not long ago, and it, it's not a thing anymore, but it, I think it was called the Hospitalis or something like that. So it was like hospital-themed from like the 50s, uh, and this is, of course, close to the Russian border, so it was a bit Eastern Bloc uh, feel over it. And it was basically you could buy whatever you can buy in a standard restaurant, but... Uh, don't order from the special. So the two centerfold pages was the special menu. And then the dinner or the, or the food was just ordinary food. But if you ordered the soup, they would come out and put you in a straight jacket and they would feed you the soup, of course, in the full uh, nursing uniform and so on. And uh, this wasn't the nursing uniform you picture. It was the, like the, the, the Russian yeah. babushka type. And of course... If you ordered the steak, you got off easy, but they swatched 
they swapped your cutlery for like this uh, sut- suture pliers and uh, <laughs> a scalpel <laughs> knife and so on. So it was real hospital themed. So uh, I actually went there and it was actually really nice. Well, I I didn't order <laughs> off the specials menu, but uh, what a weird take. <laughs> Yeah, but it was really yeah. good executed, so it's... Uh... Probably really fulfilled some people's uh, fantasies as well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a mad jump. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think it filled someone's fantasy just building it. I mean, who who get that idea? And that's like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and then actually <laughs> is able to sell other people on the idea. It's like, I mean... It, if it was at a late night party and like, haha, yeah, that's a good idea. And you wake up the next morning and like, <laughs> okay, let's get on with our lives. But no, people actually caught on. And like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Imagine working there as well. Oh, someone ordered from a special menu. <laughs> let's do on the ground and go yeah. out and feed them. <laughs> but I think it's better than TGI Fridays where you uh, every hour you have to go out and sing the birthday song <laughs> to someone who's probably just lying to get the balloon. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I went out to for my um, 21st birthday for a meal and if you took proof that it was your birthday, you got your meal free and they came out and sang to me and gave me a birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> Which was very embarrassing, but I did want the free cake and the free meal, so yeah. cake is <laughs> it was cake. worth it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm having uh, we're having this thing at work that's a bit of a mystery and I thought maybe you had some insights of how we could solve it because someone is turning off the hot water in one of the bathrooms <laughs> with one of those uh, it's called balofix in Swedish I don't know what they call just like a radiator key oh yeah there's small valves yeah, the, underneath yeah, yeah there's some, some balls yeah. and you can just turn them uh, and just the hot yeah. water yeah and no, <laughs> and I think it's one of the students we have because at the moment we have five students, I think, at the office. So they're learning at work, or but there's we've... someone who wants to blame the students playing this practical joke because this happened uh, a couple of months ago when they were here last. Ah. And h- how how to catch yeah. them? Because, I mean, um, you can't really install a camera in the bathroom. No, but we did talk about cattle fences <laughs> last episode, so you could electrify The problem is it. that then you're electrifying um, the hot water tap as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you have to break some eggs to catch some chicken. Or what, is that what, the what, saying? How was that saying again? I'm Sounds not about sure. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's... Um... Then again, uh, you could put... Um, uh, you could put some of this, uh, like this uh, secret ink you get in like uh, kids or uh, costume stores and so on, and then uh, you just uh, casually go around with your black light, and then, oh, what are those marks on your fingers? <laughs> yeah, is that really a thing? I, I, I never, I've never used anything like that. I was thinking of some kind of a paint that's sticky, something. I mean, that you use on banknotes and that sort of thing. Yeah. But My that might th- be too too much. Yeah, and then you just write a note. <laughs> was it sticky, was it? You'll never guess what it was. <laughs> or just put some Nutella on it and see. Yeah. My first ever job was a uh, precision engineer. I didn't stick at it for very long. Um, but we used to use something. It was We used to call it engineer's blue, but it was like a little, it was a little tub of blue grease, which you could just smear and then use it mm. for marking out. Yeah. And one of the chaps said to me, one day yeah, he, he yeah. was a bit of an arsehole and he, he was winding me up and he said, oh, you're going to have to get up pretty early to get me. So the following morning I got up early and got a little bit of this grease and just rubbed it underneath the draw pull on his little cabinet. And by the <laughs> end of the day, he'd got it all over his face, in his ears. <laughs> so maybe, maybe some of that stuff would do the job for you. That would also be nice. Yeah. I just have to figure out where to where I could get it. Hmm. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> they sell everything. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Or you can glue it. Sorry, it, it's basically glued shut. That's a solution. But that's not catching anyone. That just uh, yeah. And it the one the day that we need to shut it off, then someone <laughs> might get angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you probably have a master valve somewhere. Yeah, true, so uh, true. I mean, it's uh, 
those those small ones under the sink is just for convenience, yeah. basically. I mean, if you're quick enough, you don't even need to shut <laughs> off the water. You can just put a towel down and you just go in and do whatever you need to do and <laughs> call it a day. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> so, no, for those of you who are wondering, I have not worked as a plumber and <laughs> probably never will. <laughs> But if anyone is hiring, I'm <laughs> bloody efficient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was one of the uh, parents of uh, friends of our kids who were, they were uh, living uh, in a different house the last half year because when they were <laughs> renovating, one of these valves broke in the kitchen when that was the only thing, when they weren't at home. So they came oh, home to like... A couple of centimeters yeah. of water in the entire <laughs> floor. So, yeah, they had to had to rip out all the flooring, and <laughs> that's that's fun. It sounds like they had a visit from the wet bandits from Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Yeah, might be. I, I I didn't realize that when I saw Home Alone as a kid how evil that is to <laughs> to plug the drain and just leave it running. That's the, I mean, the worst thing you can do to a house. I'll basically. tell you something, it's nowhere near as bad as what Kevin actually did to the house with the tar on the steps and the paint splashing everywhere. Yeah. I mean, he really <laughs> screwed that house over, didn't he? <laughs> it would have been cheaper for them really just to strip would. it of valuables yeah. and leave. <laughs> oh. But that being said, we got a new kitchen when we moved in and of course we also uh, had a plumber swap out all the old uh, copper pipes for newer <clears throat> and of course the, it's the pipes in pipes but there's there's still a chance of something leaking under the sink for instance and i always thought uh, we have a concrete floor between the cellar and our main floor so if we have a water leak of course it's going to go down under the wood floor and then just creep along the entire house there is as far as i know no blockage there so it's gonna be a pain in the ass to fix again but then i saw you have these plastic tubs that you can put underneath your dishwasher for instance so that if it has a leak it will come to the front so we will actually detect it but that got me thinking what if i just put one of those in under the sink but with a drain and a pipe going down because along the pipe uh, the drain pipe that goes straight down and into our basement which we also have like a drain in the floor so if we have a leak in the kitchen it will just drain down to the floor underneath where there is a drain in the floor so we'll never have an accumulation of water anywhere yeah that's it's a of course, of course, we didn't do that, so now there's a kitchen in the way. So. <laughs> it, it would be a better look than just a drain in the middle of the room. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just have these uh, those plastic things. We have those in the cupboards under the sink, but no, no direct uh, hole down in the basement. But could have been a thing actually. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the kind of ideas you get when you have a. A overthinker and a over planner um, <laughs> thinking about how to design yeah. his own house. <laughs> I'm mean, thinking all the worst things that can happen, and we design a house around that. Yeah, but is it actually practical and livable? <laughs> no, but if you get a leak in 20 years, there's a solution in place for it. <laughs> and when you overthink things, then renovating the kitchen takes six years, or what it was for us. Oh my gosh. Because really? think about it, think about it, think about it some more, discuss it, think about it, order some stuff, and have a disagreement, don't talk about it for I'm a half year. So... <laughs> <laughs> of course, it helped having a time slot, but what was a game changer for us is actually uh, my brother-in-law working at IKEA, and he's also had his fair share working in the kitchen department. So when we bought this house and then we tore everything out and it's like, all right, come to Ikea one hour before closing time. And it's like, uh, okay, uh, we want this mm -hmm. style of cabinets and so on. And he's like, all right, you're going to need this. You're going to need this. And then you need four of these. And you're like, <laughs> he was going like 
a computer and then you got the list here uh, and then uh, go down and uh, everything was shipped out to us and uh, of course he also helped so he spent a day just <laughs> putting it together but that's real efficient so uh, that's a top tip uh, get to know someone that works at Ikea preferably you should try oh, the kitchen I don't, area. I don't need to I married <laughs> Michelle we went to Ikea with the full list she planned everything that we needed for hours and got it all spot on obviously <laughs> Yeah, of course, that's maybe just as good a solution. Yes. Marry someone yeah. who yeah. likes it. <laughs> yeah. That helps a lot too, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, the only hold up was ours with um, ours was um, getting to IKEA because of lockdown when we started our kitchen. We were just coming out oh. of it when we started, so it was still a bit tricky getting out and about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I saw they have this... Uh, they have this service where you can actually get someone to put it together. But that is actually not people working at IKEA. That It's just private companies that they have made a, an agreement with. But if we were to have a company to come and just install our kitchen, that would cost yeah. more than the kitchen itself. And that got me thinking, of course, I'm getting kind of efficient and I have all the tools so I don't have to use the crappy tools they say in instructions uh, I, know, I now know which setting I need on my drill to not uh, over torque <laughs> the, the fastening screws of those uh, method uh, kitchen bottom drawers uh, but then again is that the job you want to do day in and day out because I'm, I'm ready to kill someone after a yeah. day of putting together <laughs> Ikea furniture and then if that is going to be like alright I'm getting up tomorrow <laughs> putting together three kitchens and then it's uh, Another one yeah, after my, that. And... My brother used to run a, yeah. a company that did that. They fitted kitchens for a, com a company here called B and Q, and he had a team. He had about six teams working yeah. for him. But you can guarantee every you know the, the, the kitchens take a week, around about a week to fit. And on I mean, that Friday night, they're always late because they wanted to get that kitchen done because they got a new one to start on Monday. You've always got that build up pressure. I don't think that'd be a fun job. Yeah. yeah. I don't <laughs> mind putting together IKEA stuff or any stuff, but to do it for someone else, that's. I think that would take the fun out of it. You're just desperate for another job opportunity, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do anything. Hell yeah! After the after, after the day I had today, it's like I'm open for everything. <laughs> Tomorrow is a new day. It's probably going to be better. So, one day closer to the weekend. And Hopefully, some parts has arrived so I can uh, get down in my workshop and get my head straight on it. <laughs> Has your computer arrived yet? <laughs> no, but I've got the uh, tracking number and it's uh, on its way, so it should arrive within Are you a excited? week, I think. <laughs> oh, we're very. Um, of course, I need, I need some more parts, but they're not necessary. But when I got done what I did last night, it's basically the only thing I'm waiting for, so... Once I get it, I can just hook it up and just, just try to see if everything works before I do the final assembly, trying to figure out where the uh, power transformers are going and where I actually have to mount it to get all the cables to fit and so on. Nice. So, yeah. That's the fun part. <laughs> I've also been starting to think how I would like to do the the final video when it's actually... well in quotes playable so um starting to think about that i do have an organ that's also playable so uh <laughs> well you do need an audience for that we'll see yeah yeah i'm gonna put it on youtube i think so yeah that's... so live reacting audience <laughs> what are uh, your thoughts for the the final yeah. video are you, you're gonna do an ed edited proper video i presume oh it's yeah and I've also have the back in my mind. Of course, I uh, I have a, a standing invitation for a collaboration with uh, Team Recorder, which is a huge channel in the recorder world. So we have been playing with one idea. Um, now I also got another one. Of course, I don't play the recorder. I, I know all the notes and uh, I, I know a few basic children's songs, basically. So I was kind of thinking... I could try to butcher 
um, a well-known song on my recorder and just midway through, well, now th this is not working. And then I just swap <laughs> over to the hell quarter. And of course I could at some point, no, nah, there's still something missing. And then of course uh, I could have uh, Sarah, who's a professional uh, flutist to actually come in and make it sound <laughs> great. Oh, wow. So yeah, we'll see. I've also thought, well, of course, doing a collaboration online, it's a bit, well, I did check. I'm like, how long does it take me to drive to the Netherlands? Because I have uh, other people I know there, so I could make a weekend out of it. But lugging that Mastodon into the car and driving for a lot of hours, and then you need, of course, all the tools for everything that <laughs> breaks <laughs> uh, while they're outside of your workshop and need fixing. So, yeah, I don't think that will happen. But, uh... You made any progress on the hot table? Uh, no, I cut the mesh to size. And then I realized I made I forgot it <laughs> too small of a size. Uh, but I, I'm basically waiting for the weekend. I think I will get the the, um, the oak sidings, uh, start to make the frame. So it's uh, yeah, it's basically to just prep for the the concrete pour. Nice. So it's uh, but it's it's as I said last time. Of course, if I do that properly, it need proper legs and. I really don't want to <laughs> spend money on proper wood for that. And like, uh, all right, if you're going to make some decent legs, you need some bracings and so on. And then you have to really start to think about it. And then it starts to feel like <laughs> woodworking. So just put that in. It was going to just be a hilarious project. And then now I have to do proper woodwork. Just put that in a part two. <laughs> yeah. Could I, um... Or maybe... Does it no, I was just about to say, KJ did a floating brick type effect, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> you could do I can put in chains. some hooks yes. and then it can be <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, chains, of course, yeah. Lay it on a, a clear cube of resin. <laughs> <laughs> That's that cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> that... <laughs> oh, yeah. That's when I... When I see these river tables and they're pouring like liters of liters. And uh, we have a, a wood shop a supplier uh, close by here. And they actually sell this clear type epoxy for those kind of projects. And that is pricey. I've seen other people complain about it as well. So yeah. it's not only here. But yeah. when I see the price of that, I mean, those <laughs> tables <laughs> aren't mm. nice enough to justify that price. Not to me, at least, not at all. No. <laughs> I mean, you could probably put gold leaf on the entire live edge of that table, and it would still be <laughs> cheaper than that epoxy pour in the middle. I still think it's a crying shame you're not you're not making a uh, a concrete river table. Yeah, that would be cool. But then the the question is: is the is the wood the river, or do you make a wood table but you pour the concrete? That would, of course, be the most. Uh, sensible way to go about it but <laughs> you get the sides for free in a way yeah but then again i saw someone giving away a lot of aquariums uh on the, an online marketplace and i do have a glass cutting knife so maybe i should make a proper <laughs> river table yeah. with uh, i mean i have like uh i have like a fountain pump which i use for our outside uh pond so I, I have the pumping capacity to make a decent river table <laughs> and then how yeah, thick would so you have to make it's the topic of uh, having <laughs> a leak <laughs> how thick would you have to make it to be able to have fish in it depends on the fish you get those teeny tiny ones like uh five <laughs> millimeter ones so not much but then you're going to want a river fish aren't you so you need some teeny tiny trout or something <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> some salmon yeah some salmon yeah. jumping up yeah and do you need them to be alive or could it be dead fish? or <laughs> so? Preferably a live salmon and then you serve sushi on the table. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> kind of morbid. <laughs> a leaping salmon river table. That would be amazing. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You, you get that idea. You can have it. Oh. <laughs> You'd have to tether it at one end, wouldn't you? You'd stop it being washed over the edge. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of cool. I saw this art exhibition where they actually put uh, various kind of animals in resin of course uh, you, and then they cut the cow yeah. in half so you could oh, also yeah. see all the oh, I can't remember his name, parts. what's he called? So uh, mm -hmm. that was kind of fascinating 
Yeah. I don't I don't remember, yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's a famous artist that they is traveling all over the world. So uh. <laughs> Talking of artists, KJ, have you sorted your pasty sign out? It's looking really good today. Uh I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you can actually read pasty. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's just... probably the angle. Yeah. It's probably the angle. Okay. The camera's Stick with that a bit angle. higher. Yeah. <laughs> Works well. <laughs> and me standing in front of it so you don't have to see it as well. <laughs> But on the topic of the paste design, uh, have you checked behind it recently? <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you got to I'm going to be distrustful of everything here. Oh. I, think. So I, had a, a, I should really reach out to Howard's <laughs> wife because I feel like there's one leg missing of this triangle. Because everyone's <laughs> talking with everyone's wife, but yeah, I feel left out somewhat. <laughs> Luckily, I'm an introvert, so it won't yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I think I've only messaged your wife once up to yet, Howard. Yeah, but I don't remember what it was about. Well, that's because we've not we told you. mention yet. it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, go figure. I have to be careful when I'm opening doors, looking around corners. And... Well, you, you have set the bar at being nice surprises. <laughs> I don't think anybody has to be worried. <laughs> Yet. I mean, KJ might, no. KJ might come there and saying... turn your hot water off. Because <laughs> we know it's yeah. him, right? <laughs> well, then, then I just put on gloves before I touch the, the valve. Yeah, but it, it, it's nice that I, I set the standard off with nice things so I don't have to like be afraid of a Kato just showing up in my closet one evening post the cat to you <laughs> <laughs> then you'll get the cat back so yeah. <laughs> yeah the cat of all cats I mean the cat of all nightmares <laughs> so yeah <sighs> that cat I need to I don't want to ruin any of my shovels <laughs> just picking up. I thought you meant hitting the cat. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where that was going. Well, uh, I- I'm not going to say that that thought hasn't crossed my mind before, but uh, still, it's my late dad's cat, so I would I couldn't live with the uh, conscience. But you've had it longer than your dad ever had it now, so I think it's I think it's okay now. It's open season on the cat. I, it is my cat, and then of course, but she's getting to that age that she should probably take the hint on her yeah. on her own. And I, I have seen we we I, we have both a family of badgers, and I've seen roaming foxes around on evening walks and so on. So crossing <laughs> my fingers, but she's still very nimble, so uh, she'll probably <laughs> escape them. So. Like you, uh, bought batteries just to spite me. She'll probably just live longer just to spite you. Yeah. yeah, most likely. <laughs> when you get to a certain uh, age, that's all that fu- fuels you. <laughs> <sighs> so on that sad note, we call it a night. And if anyone out there wants a cat, hit me up. I'll uh, actually put in uh, something extra. Uh, you might get a butter knife or a... Or a free uh, casino or whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll see how I can sweeten the deal. Sounds great. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>